Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and National Guard get together to prove which branch of service is best, you can expect fireworks. And no one was disappointed when those units met in the second annual United States Armed Forces match race on the big mile track of the California State Fairgrounds in Sacramento. Lon McCarran brings us the story. At first glance, the night seemed like any other at Cal Expo Raceway in Sacramento, but there was evidence that this night of racing would be something to remember. The track hosted its second annual United States Armed Forces Night, with a main attraction, a match race between representatives of six branches of the military. Like most professional sports, harness racing, when viewed from the outside, seems much simpler than it really is. It's not just jumping in the sulky and grabbing the reins. To prepare for this showdown, the military personnel went back to boot camp and attempted to learn in one week what it takes the pros years to master. I thought, here I go again. And it, was, it was 18 years, nine months ago that I went through this, and here I am again. Boot camp drill sergeant Bobby Gordon was going to teach these rookies which strap goes to which buckle and how to find the best ride without getting boxed in down the home stretch. You'll learn the rest of this week on how to jog a horse, how to put the harness and the gear on one, and how to control one. And in a week's time, we'll try and get you where you can get around the track safely and uh, hopefully win a race for your branch, maybe. I don't profess to be the expert. Well, I wanted to, to learn when I got out here was to start from ground level and then work my way up. And that is exactly what I've done up to this point. We're not used to how we should be controlling the horse. I guess that's the reason why I feel like there's less control, because it is a new experience. With the preliminaries out of the way, it was time to move out of the stable and onto the track. Some drivers were more comfortable around the horses than others. Your experience with horses is? Absolutely zero. When I lived with my father for a short while, he bought me a Shetland pony. And my stepsister also had a quarter horse. And that's what I learned to ride when I was about nine years old. Got put on the horse, slap on the butt, and off I went. And uh, we came back about two hours later, and I kind of knew what I was doing by then. There are elements of danger built into harness racing. The high speeds and tight packs were areas of concern for both the military personnel and the professionals training them. There's an element of danger for sure, but uh, they're going to race in jog carts, which are training carts, and they're a little more sturdy than, than the racing carts that we use in, in a regular race. So that'll be to their advantage. And, you know, if they would happen to bump into each other or, you know, hopefully that won't happen. That's why they were with us for a week to show them how to guide a horse. When they're out there professionally racing, uh, you know, they have, you know, they have a horse breathing down their neck. Um, because they're so close, uh, they don't want us to run that close. Uh, it's okay to fall in behind somebody and kind of let them break the wind, you know, and, uh, and then maybe try to make a move to go around. But they, all, they emphasize the clearance with the wheels and, and make sure that you're aware that you got another, you know, two, three out, two, three feet on either side of you that you got to watch out for. All right, guys, here's your uh, diploma. You've all did a real good job. It may have lacked the usual pomp and circumstance of a normal armed forces presentation, but boot camp graduation ceremonies transform these sergeants, captains, and petty officers into bona fide harness racing drivers. The camaraderie of boot camp ended with graduation. Now it was time to get down to brass tacks. The reputation of each branch of the service rested squarely on the shoulders of their representative behind the starting gate. Here they come for the second annual Armed Forces Match Race. And there they go, they're off and pacing, hustling up on the outside, National Guard along with the Marines. We have a tight pack as they move down the backstretch. Now they're three across the track. They're racing around that far turn now. Every trainer has, has given each one of us the, the techniques of how to, to win. But now it's for us to apply it. It would jazz me if I could uh, beat the guys. Uh, I've, I've had that sort of experience before in, in my basic training where I kind of came on top uh, above a lot of guys. And that was uh, good for the self-esteem. It really, really boosts your confidence a lot. And I think it would be nice. They're driving for the wire. Here comes the Marines. The Marines shooting down the Army. Also moving up is the Air Force, but it's too late. The Marines winning the war. 
So the Marine Corps is the winner of the second annual U.S. Armed Forces match race. The Corps may have won the race, but they could be losing one good man in the process. Well, after I retire, I might come in and apply as a driver. Uh, it's in my blood now. <laughs> you can be sure the Marine Corps will be back next year with another strong driver to defend its title. For Harness Racing 89, I'm Lon McCarran.